Breaking news, whether it's Syria, China, or Washington, D.C., it really turns out the Federal Reserve and the rate hike debate is what is moving the markets most. We are now just 12 days away from the next Federal Reserve meeting. But is it already a so-called Fed fail? The Federal Reserve failed to raise interest rates in September. An October rate hike doesn't look likely if you talk to economists and market watchers, so that leaves... December, the last meeting of the year, is the only opportunity left in 2015. But the Fed Fund's futures, that's where traders bet on the timing of a rate hike, are pricing in now, at this hour, a 40% chance of a rate hike in January of 2016. Now, lately, a chorus of Fed governors and presidents have been speaking, making, making it almost a public debate. One of those voices is saying more loudly, it's time. Hike interest rates now or re-risk what? Well, let's ask her. Loretta Mester is president of the Cleveland Fed. She becomes a voting member in the new year, and she's been a hawk on rates. You're joining us in a Fox Business exclusive. Welcome. Thank you very much. Great to be here. October 28th is coming up. If you were, and I know this is counterfactual and it's hypothetical, right. but if you were a voting member, would you vote to raise interest rates? Well, I'm not going to say whether I'm going to vote if I were voting. That is a counterfactual. But I can say that I think the economy can handle a rate increase. Um, if you look at the different sectors, the consumption sector is doing well, balance sheets are, household balance sheets are doing well, housing is coming back. We have an, an, uh, an employment, a labor market that looks after, if you look at a whole bunch of statistics on labor markets, they look good. We've averaged 200,000 jobs per month this year. Um, yes, we've gotten some weak reports, you know, in the past couple of weeks. But in gen, in, you know, in general, if you look at how far the the uh, economy has come, we're at or nearly at our goal on full employment, and I'm reasonably confident that inflation is going to get back up to two percent over the medium run. So there are downside risks from growth, you know, global growth, um, which we take into account in our our models and our forecasts. But I think the economy can move up from zero, which is an emergency interest rate. Um, and be able to handle that. Okay, by how much? A quarter of a point? Less than that? Well, the way the path is, if you look at the um, survey of economic projections that the FOMC puts out, and what Chair Yellen has been saying and most of us have been saying is really when liftoff is, one meeting here, one meeting there, it doesn't matter. It's the path of interest rates after liftoff. And based on our view of the economy, most of us are saying that a, a gradual path up of interest rates is probably what's going to be consistent with um, a continued economic growth. So it's a gradual path up of interest rates. Okay, that we're so can I push you here? So everybody always just assumes it's a quarter of a percent right, but rate hike, but could it be something less, like 15 basis points, just so that it makes it, quote, gradual? I wouldn't support that. I mean, I think fine tuning at that level doesn't really make sense. It's not historically what we've done um, over the past, you know. We did it back in the day, very early in Fed history, but since, you know, modern history, we've only done quarters. So I think be consistent with that, move up a quarter, um, and let the, you know, the data dictate where we go from there. But my, my anticipation is that if the economy evolves, as I'm forecasting, a gradual increase up in rates will be okay. consistent. So that's a quarter. Listen, you're not alone. You have Esther George of Kansas City. She has said, uh, obviously, this is the time. Now is the time. Everybody seems to be speaking. We've had uh, Jeffrey Lecker, who, who was on with Peter Barnes, Bill Dudley of New York, James Bullard of St. Louis. Uh, but then you have two Fed governors speaking recently who cautioned, wait a minute, we have to stop, we have to wait, this economy is not ready. Are, are, are you confusing the public? Well, I hope not. I mean, what we're trying to do, or what I, my perspective is, that the Fed should be transparent and communicate our rationale for decision making. So I think Chair Yellen did an excellent job and has done an excellent job of explaining what the trade offs are, what the balance of risk. It's a risk management procedure, right? You go into the meeting, you have a view, and then you listen to what your colleagues say around the table, and different people have different views given what's going on in the economy. I'm not upset by the fact that we have a diversity of views. In fact, I think it would be more upsetting if everyone came in with exactly the same view, given what's going on in the economy. I would be afraid that we're missing something. So it's really how do you assess the risk? My feeling is that it, the more we delay, the more there'll be risk. We've learned from history that things can get away from us. I'd like to be able to be consistent with the gradual increase. And I think by moving now, when the economy can handle it, 
I think we're going to be consistent with that gradual increase. Okay, so I am hearing from you. You feel the economy is comfortable and solid enough at the moment to be able to handle that. However, uh, we've got a debt ceiling. We just talked to Treasury Secretary Jack Lew. Uh, if we hit it, if there's too much argument in Congress and it is just 17 days away, would that change your view? I mean... Obviously, we have to take events as they come, right? And so we would have to take into consideration that. Uh, you know, my, my hope is that we can get, you know, the debt ceiling done. Well, how I mean, brutal will the fight be over this? I, I can't predict. But, I mean, I would hope there'd be learning, right? I mean, I would hope that we would learn this. You're because, an optimist. <laughs> well, you know, I have to be optimistic that there's learning. How much does something like China, the Greek debt crisis, how, how when you're in these behind closed door meetings with Janet Yellen, is something like that or those big global issues taken into effect? Well, we do, we do talk about the global economy because we're a part of the global economy. So, but the, the mindset is, okay, if developments in the global economy go in a certain way, what does that impact on the U.S. economy? And of course, global growth impacts our economy, not through the direct trade channel from China, but China will affect other emerging markets markets will affect commodity prices, will affect oil prices. And then the question for us is, how does that affect our outlook? Uh, this, is, this is a tough question to ask because I, I would anticipate your answer, but I need to ask it. Does a presidential election play any kind of political games in the minds of all of you at the Fed? So honestly, I've been going to FOMC meetings for a long time, not just since I've been you know, a president, but for many years before that as a staffer. And I would say politics don't come into it. We really are tr putting policy on what we think of the economy can handle, where our outlook is. Because the, the accusation is that Janet Yellen is doing President Obama a favor by keeping rates low. What, how would you uh, categorize absolutely, that? Absolutely not. That doesn't come into it at all. Not at all. No. If you were to vote that first meeting after the first of the year, would you vote for a rate hike? I'm going to have to see how the economy evolves, right? I, I don't have a vote until January. I want to see what the economy is. And, you know, we, it looks we, we, are always, it is now. we are always looking at what's going on with the economy. So, again, it's this risk management perspective, right? Are the risks outweighed on one side or the other? And I, I respect colleagues who say that, you know, we don't want to go because, you know, the, in their point of view, the economy looks fragile and it's perhaps better to wait. But my own view is that the economy can handle a small increase. Monetary policy will continue to be very accommodative. Mm -hmm. And that accommodation adds, you know, some insurance against downside risk. Loretta Mester, head of the Cleveland Fed. It's great to have you here. Thank you. And Thank a Fox you. Business exclusive. You're one of the tough ones along with Esther George. It's but I like to, to think see. of myself as an owl, not as a hawk. Why an owl? Because of wisdom. I'm uh -huh. trying to aim for wisdom. <laughs> Okay, we'll call you the owl. Let's hope. Please join us again. Thank you very much. Thanks she says lot. we can handle a quarter of a point rate cut, no less. That would be kind of fine-tuning it too much.